Nick Hayward joins me now. That last track's gorgeous. Oh, thank Baby you. Baby Blue Sky. Yeah. You're always really, low. your songs, though, they are really joyful. They make you feel better. Yeah, I don't know. It just, just pops out. I go to write something deep, dark and mysterious. Dark, yes. <laughs> and out pops the sunshine. Which is know. fantastic, isn't yeah. it? It is absolutely great. So tell me about, I mean, 18 years, for goodness sake, you took your time. I did, didn't I? <laughs> you really did. Yeah, I did. I know. I kind of left the music business for a while. Did really. you? What did you do? Well, after I was on Creation Records, um, right. oh, around the Britpop times, yeah. and um, one night I had this most beautiful experience uh, after a load of stuff that was really, really not great happening. Like my mum uh, was told that she had, she had emphysema mm. and she had, uh, you know, months to on this planet. Mm. And uh, I lost the record deal and then the publishing deal. And so everything sort of collided at right. once. And... Um, just one morning, I had this uh, epiphany where everything just went. M Nick Haywood went too. Everything, well, you all just the struggle. Let it go. You just everything let it go. went. Yeah. Wow. I was only going to let go of the girlfriend, <laughs> and everything piled in. Oh no. A lot. But, but and yeah, I was you in just tears felt... of joy. So how do you get? To, because every, people would pay fortunes to get to that stage. I know. And of I, just I, feeling just, better about stuff. It was. It was so lovely. I mean, I kept crying. And uh, the, the first, it was. It wasn't beforehand. The crying was kind of like tears of pity. And then it turned into tears of joy. So I think it was through the suffering that, that happened, definitely. I mean, yeah. looking back in hindsight now, sure. it's clearly that. That is your doorway into it. The, more, the, the more suffering, the better. Right, and then you came out the other end. Yes. But a lot of people don't. I mean, it's amazing that, know, you, that you did. You know, a lot of people just struggle and they, they have problems. And yeah. yet you were just, you had a word with yourself and there, there you were. Well, I think it was myself that just dissolved. That's, That's the amazing. stuff that I didn't have any idea. And you sort of left that behind, that whole sort of pop persona, all of that. Just, yeah, just I just, today. I just wandered around doing yeah. nothing. Um, Gosh. And uh, being a dad and doing all these things, and yeah. Yeah, and then then I'd I've watched my, you know, my son and daughter, you know, grow up, and then I've seen Kate go through a similar kind of thing, where she struggled a lot with with mental illness and stuff, and just well back then. We didn't know what it was. You right. know, panic attacks were just, they weren't panic attacks. You just suffered in silence. You know, right. you would feel, you, would, you didn't know how you felt, but you couldn't tell anybody because if they weren't going through it, they wouldn't understand or empathise. Mm. So you were just going through something and you couldn't go to the doctor. So you couldn't go anywhere. You couldn't go to your parents. You couldn't go to anyone. So it was um, panic attacks. Oh, now I'll call panic attacks and depression. And I've seen my daughter go through... Uh, the same kind of similar kind of thing, but it, mm. much easier, you know. Because people are talking about it exactly, now, and you can yeah. actually, and it's okay, and people should never, ever, ever feel ashamed. No. Because why should they? You, would, you wouldn't be ashamed if you had a saddle so That's the head. first feeling that you get. That I first know. emotion it's is crazy, isn't shame. It? So if you broke your leg, you're not going to go. I'm so, I'm so ashamed that I broke my leg. It's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you should think about that just because it happens to be a mental illness, yeah. rather than something that you can see and has got a bandage on it. Yeah. You know, yeah. it just seems really, really crazy. Do you find music a therapy, or is that too much of a cliche? But do you find that? Um, does it help you writing these songs? I, th I think so. The, the, the creative process is, is wonderful anyway, because you, you, if you're pushing too hard in a similar way with life, you know, or, you know, like speech or, or anything, if you're mm. trying to be funny, um, you're not going to be funny. And then it's when you bang your head on the microphone and everybody laughs. <laughs> I'd love it to be at the Roundhouse next to where oh, we recorded oh, Pelican West great. at 100 Chalk Farm Road next door i just i just see that that i just see it in the future if it, if it doesn't happen well it doesn't happen it's not meant to be but i would love that uh, is that where the name came from from the address Kate not really no. kind of kind of just came out of that of nowhere land you know that john lennon wrote about that yeah. place that just where is that stuff you know it just <laughs> plucks it, it just out comes. it just comes, just comes isn't it yeah. are you all still in touch do you still keep in touch yeah uh, blair played on this album oh brilliant yeah drums oh, and he played yeah i speak to graham Good, good, good. Well, yeah. get them all together and get back on the road and do all that. Cause it's always better second or third time round. It's just always better, yeah. I'd imagine. Yeah. Do you have to wear the jumpers, though? Jumpers. Yeah, we'll have to do it in the winter. Yes. 